In Love Canal, there was a dump site in the middle of a, what became a residential community. It hadn't been. One. The contamination was the, the hazardous contaminants were put into the, the, the former canal and then covered over. So they were underground. They were totally un enclosed. They ended up migrating into the groundwater and moving sideways so that they became underneath the residential communities. Then, in a couple of very wet years, during the late 1970s, the water table rose and the contamination rose with it and ended up coming into people's backyards, into their cellars and things of that sort. So the contamination was literally in their backyards and in their homes. Another issue that floats through all of this, excuse the metaphor, <laughs> which was not intended, um, but do we know is that a few years ago, there was a storm surge in New Orleans that caused tremendous amount of damage. In this particular case, we've heard from both the city and the federal government that there are sediments at the bottom of the canal that if disturbed could be very toxic in parts of four and a half percent as opposed to parts per million or billion. And so one of the questions that we've asked for a number of years now is, could someone please, please model for us storm surges at different levels and let us know exactly how bad a disaster we might expect until all of this is cleaned up. No one has mentioned building levees or anything else to deal with the issue of keeping the Gowanus from overflowing its banks disturbing the sediment and depositing that up on existing housing or future housing. What about the effect of global warming? The mayor has himself has issued a statement that tides are going to get higher, there's going to be more flooding. The canal is in something called the 100-year flood zone. Since everything is being measured by 1988 standards where we are surpassing that rainfall every year since 19. 88 by at least 20 percent, um, we can expect a lot of flooding. When there are heavy rains, of any, of, or, or really torrential rains, and or a lot of rain over a long period of time, water from the canal and there's high tide, water from the canal will come up to that area, right there. Come down and take a look. See, see just how much space there is that divides what is underwater now from what could be underwater during a bad rainstorm. The city has a nerve. How do you get away with rezoning a toxic waterway? How do you do that? And toxic land? I take the city at their word that they believe that uh, uh, some of the redevelopment would be uh, and reinvestment would be accelerated in their judgment. Uh, if the site is not put on the Superman list or said the other way around that they are concerned that some of the investment would flee from the area if the site were put on the Superman list. Uh, I don't think there's that much of a difference between us having proposed it for Superman listing and making the final listing, but I'm not a real estate expert. No surprise to people, the canal is fairly contaminated. We found polycyclic aromatic hydrocarbons. There's a reason we shorten some of these things. PAHs. <laughs> Um, up to 4.5% in the canal sediments. That is a really high number, very high. We also found heavy metals, arsenic through <coughs> zinc, we pretty much found them all. To this day, nobody's done a health study here. Nobody's really done any intensive upland soil testing. They, there has, the Army Corps has done water uh, research and water testing, so there are statistics for that. Um, but as far as the industry goes, there was 100, 150 years worth of uh, tanneries, ice houses, um, ink factories, um, dye factories. Coal, coal was the worst. Coal manufacturing, gas, gasification plants. We're still seeing the remnants of these old industries. The Flushing Tunnel was supposed to have been completed last year. The original timeline was finished in 2008. The city decided they had bigger priorities after originally funding it. They pulled the funds out from under it and walked away from it, uh, which leaves us feeling like the city has never really extended themselves to doing any environmental cleanup in this area, and they've been putting delay after delay after delay now for more than 30 years to taking any steps forward to, to address the water quality issues. Yeah, as I said at the outset, uh, there's many ways of getting something done. I think I used a worse phrase than that about cats. But... 
Uh, I don't want to suggest that you can't do this in multiple ways. There are, there are many different ways you can do things. Our concern is that um, the more complex an already very complicated matter becomes, the more likely it is to be fragile or brittle or susceptible to some kind of failure along the way. Uh, Kaz and Dan shared this uh, flowchart with us uh, on, I think, meeting on Thursday evening. Um, certainly interested, we certainly want to understand more about it, but my response to Kaz last Thursday evening was, there's a lot of moving parts here, and uh, this is a complicated process that you're proposing. It's already a complicated situation. I, I'm a little concerned about the complexity of the process. understand that under the city's alternative planning process, they have to get everybody, all the pollutants, to voluntarily step forward and participate. And if one of those guys step out, then you're entering into a court system that could drag it on for far longer than if it were being supervised by the EPA. That the alternative probably is going to set up a situation that runs much longer in time span to address the issues than if it were addressed through the procedures that are already established under EPA. The way the EPA has explained Superfund is funded is the pollutants are held accountable for their contaminants. The uh, key span, who is one of the primary contaminants from the coal gasification site, are backing Superfund. If it goes with it, they're totally on board. We have to bring all the other polluters into the mix also to help cover the funding. Superfund will be funded through the federal government and that money recouped from the uh, polluters. I wouldn't be on that canoe. I have no idea what would happen if, if for some reason or other I got in contact with that water for any length of time. We have a dead estuary here. If the Army Corps could go forward, as they have already been charged to, to restore this to a functioning estuary, it would benefit more than just our local community, but the broader community of New York and also the earth and our biosphere. What a gift! The EPA, they have experience with this. They have the procedures. They know how to do this. Let's not tie their hands. They, they need community support. They need support to do this, and let's give it to them. We are in the midst of a 90-day comment period with the EPA ending July 8th. Go to superfungawanas.org. We want everyone to go to make comments on the EPA site, telling personal stories, adding photographs, or just saying, I want the canal cleaned up. You don't have to live in the Gowanus area to do this. You just have to believe that the canal needs to be cleaned. So go to www.superfungowanus.org and do two things. Sign the petition, which is going to go to our elected officials so that they know how their constituents feel and uh, get the correct addresses either by regular mail or email to personally give your opinion and uh, send as much information, photos, whatever, to the EPA so that the EPA, who is counting votes for the, during this 90-day comment period and really looking at how people feel, know that you want them to clean up the Gowanus. So please go superfundgowanus.org now, before July 8th for sure, because July 8th is the end of the comment period. Make it personal if you have anything personal to say. The other thing below that is a link to the petition. There you just add your name. Just please go to that site. Help us. Thank you. One of the major itemized things that you can say to them is that we want the combined sewer overflow problem addressed. Because without addressing that, all of the money and all the time and all the effort won't be terribly beneficial. The only process on the table that we have right now is Superfund. When uh, this was announced, it brought great hope to our community. Uh, we are really surprised at what a groundswell of uh, support that everybody's been hearing for the Superfund because we believe that this is probably our only possibility to finally addressing the environmental conditions here in the Gowanus.